A lot of talk about RFK Jr. this week, so let's have it out a bit, shall we? UNFTR. For several months, I've been saying that the biggest threat to Biden's re-election, apart from his age, or rising inequality, his blind support of Israel's ethnic cleansing policy in Gaza, or his belief that compromise with Republicans is still possible, the incremental nature of his bottom-up middle-out strategy not making enough of an impact on the real wages and economic security for the lower middle classes in this country, failure to meaningfully stem the tide of border crossings, inability to connect with young voters, is the specter of RFK Jr. In fact, we were just talking about that on the podcast this week, and as if on cue, listener Brendan T. emailed about RFK as I was writing Max Notes for this week's newsletter. What's the newsletter, you might ask? Well, that's the free weekly newsletter roundup of important news for progressives, of course. Just go to unftr.com to subscribe for free and join the thousands of like-minded and intellectually curious progressives in our journey. Anyway, here's what Brendan wrote. Quote, I have a lot of kids and a lot of jobs slash roles, so not a lot of time. A friend of mine was talking up RFK Jr., and I didn't really have a response. So I checked up on his platform, and other than the vaccine bullshit, it seemed pretty good. I know y'all have covered him before, and I'm pretty sure the UNFTR movement is not a fan. I'm probably not remembering, but could I get a refresher? What is wrong with this guy, other than and in addition to the vaccine bullshit? Is he leaving a dangerous libertarian stance out of his platform? First off, I'm really grateful for this email because it perfectly encapsulates the voter mindset as we plod through the never-ending election cycle. And as a reminder that no one needs, our chart of the week in the newsletter this week is a snapshot of polling data from 538 on Election Day 2016, giving Hillary Clinton a 71.4% chance of winning. Now, the purpose of including this bleak memory is to illustrate just how bad polling is at capturing true voter sentiment in this era of fractured attention. So take Brendan's lead-in, for example. I have a lot of kids and a lot of jobs slash roles, so not a lot of time. Now, this resonates with me in a powerful way because it's all of us. And heading into the election, we all know Trump and we all know Biden. But how well do we actually know Bobby Kennedy Jr.? The answer is not well. And I think that's not only deliberate, but it's a hidden advantage considering how dismal Trump and Biden's favorability ratings are. He's the guy that nobody sees coming. Now, this week was an important inflection point of sorts as RFK Jr. picked up ballot access in the battleground state of Michigan, making it only the second state to affirm his placement on the ballot in November. But boy, oh boy, is it a big one. While this novice politician faces an enormous and very expensive uphill battle to obtain access in all 50 states and D.C., it's a bit of a nightmare scenario for the Biden team that is already struggling to contend with the significant opposition movement among Arab and Muslim voters in Michigan to his blind support of Israel. Recall that in 2020, the states that Biden flipped to secure victory were Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Arizona, and Michigan. This election is projected to be much closer, so every flipped battleground state makes an enormous difference. That's why the Arizona abortion bill, the gerrymandering battles in Georgia, Fetterman's bizarre turn in Pennsylvania, and the turnout of uncommitted Democratic primary protest votes in Michigan and Wisconsin were such a big deal. These are subplots to the larger narrative that have an outsized impact on the election because of where they are. Now, some are favorable to Biden, like the Arizona abortion ban. Others favor Trump, as in the case of the Palestine protest votes. The unknown, of course, is how RFK would fare in these areas. The New York Times did a piece yesterday, as a matter of fact, on an ex-Bernie pollster who's been raising the red flag about RFK with respect to key voting blocks, specifically young and Latino voters. They also reference a recent Quinnipiac poll that showed Biden with a 20-point edge over Trump head-to-head but that lead diminishes to nine points when RFK is included. Now, most mainstream news outlets are focused on Kennedy's anti-vaccination stance and are dismissive of him because of it. But that's a dangerous strategy for the liberal establishment to play. Because most data suggests that anti-vaxxers used to align more with the left than the right in the pre-COVID days. So there are subgroups that are hard to pin down and might be notoriously unresponsive to polling strategies like tech bros that take supplements and grind all day while listening to Joe Rogan, older African-American voters that have great sympathy for what Bobby's father represented. 
environmentalists, libertarians, anti-war activists. Somehow, both anti-Semites and pro-Israel voters have taken a shine to him. Perhaps first-time voters, considering he's the most popular presidential candidate on TikTok. I can promise you this, TikTok enthusiasts and tech bros aren't responding to pollsters. And if the Democratic establishment takes the Latino and African-American vote for granted again, it could be a fatal mistake. A nip here, a tuck there, a few more swing states, and a following that might be nearly impossible to poll, and RFK Jr. could turn this into one of the wildest and most unpredictable elections in American history. Now, his path so far has been a little curious. Running first as a Democrat, then declaring as an independent, flirting with the Libertarian nomination the entire way, which may or may not be possible anymore, and he says he won't pursue. It's been a wild ride, and he's discovered the hard way how difficult it is to actually secure ballot access, a barrier that the corporate duopoly worked very diligently to erect ever since Ross Perot got 19% of the popular vote, with 19 million votes in 1992. I mean, think about that. Almost a fifth of eligible voters were saying, fuck it, in 1992. It's not a stretch to think that that could be significantly higher in 2024, considering who's running. Now, to answer Brendan's question, it's almost impossible to say who or what RFK Jr. really is. Not only because the corporate media has tried to paint him as a single-issue candidate and a loony bird, but because he shifts with the tide. And he's more adept at projecting a populist image than I think he gets credit for. In terms of platform, most of his stances are pretty run-of-the-mill. Student debt cancellation with no plan as to how he would get this done. Police reform with pretty standard ideas of representation and law enforcement. New Democrat-style economic development policies like investing in black-owned businesses and offering microloans to black entrepreneurs. Tried and failed miserably under Clinton, by the way. Ending proxy wars and withdrawing troops and nukes from Russia's border in return for Putin pulling out of Ukraine. Ending endless wars by reinvesting in the military at home instead of abroad which is painfully light on details, except that the theoretical savings, according to his platform, would quite literally pay for Social Security to be funded forever, ensure dignified retirements for everybody, contribute to universal health care and child care, and so on. But he doesn't say that these things are part of the plan, just that they're theoretically possible if we got rid of the military altogether. So it's a non-answer answer designed to appeal to the Bernie wing, to libertarians, and to young people, but in rhetoric only. On the border, he's indistinguishable from Biden, except he's more prone to lean on terms like illegal and appearing tough on migrants. He wants to regenerate all of America's soil by getting rid of agricultural chemicals, okay? Restrict natural gas exports to reduce the price of fossil fuels domestically, which displays either a complete ignorance on how fossil fuel pricing works, or he's just pandering and he knows that this is stupid and illogical. He says he wants to regulate big businesses so that we can lift restrictions off small businesses, but he doesn't say how, what, or why. But when I've seen him interviewed, he parrots most of the neoliberal free market will cure all talking points that have been tried and failed for 50 plus years. Now make no mistake, in terms of economy, he's a free market libertarian when it comes to everything but vaccines and pesticides. On abortion, he's riding a really fine line. So his platform doesn't explicitly say I'm pro-choice. Rather it says, more choices, more life. So he's trying to have it all ways on this issue. He never really addresses Roe v. Wade, doesn't say pro-choice or pro-life, just that it shouldn't be economically impossible to have a baby, and that's how we can provide bodily autonomy. It's a non-policy that he'll get called out for as soon as we get further down the road, but you can bet that he'll avoid the conversation as much as humanly possible. Perhaps his most inventive idea is the concept of a federally backed 3% mortgage bond to make home ownership more attainable. Again, no details on how this would work alongside the private market, if it's means tested, where it sits alongside Fannie and Freddie, FHA, veteran loans, and other programs. Just a neat little universal talking point that helps him stand out and connect with people left behind in the housing market. So that's pretty much the sum of it. A little something something for everyone. But if we take the big social stuff and the vaccine stuff out of the mix and just focus on, let's say, foreign policy and domestic economic policy, RFK is so woefully uninformed, it's scary that he's polling as high as he is. And if he connects with voters, it will be out of pure emotional alignment on very specific issues or just out of complete fucking frustration that we're running back the 2020 election with two of the least popular national figures. 
His grasp of markets and economics is almost laughable. In everything that I've seen and heard from him and reading his policy statements does nothing to dissuade me from this sentiment. And not that I think VP choices really matter, but his selection of Nicole Shanahan was a purely cynical money play. Between the two of them, they have zero political experience. But to the extent that she connects, let's let her opening salvo tell you a little something about why she's here. She said, if you're one of those disillusioned Republicans, I welcome you to join me, a disillusioned Democrat. That's why I've been warning since day one that RFK is a bigger threat to Biden than he is to Trump. I think people initially thought that his anti-vax stance would compete with the QAnon element of MAGA, but there is no universe in which MAGA Trump supporters will vote for anyone but Trump. None. So here's how you know the establishment Democrats are finally hip to the idea that this guy is a real problem. This week, a group of former colleagues at the National Resources Defense Council announced a campaign against Kennedy's candidacy, saying he's no longer recognizable from the once environmental champion and legal advocate that they knew. These former associates join another rather prominent group in calling for Kennedy to step down. The entire Kennedy family. So it's interesting to note that just last month, RFK said he's closing the door on a possible run on the libertarian ticket. That's how confident he is at the moment that he'll secure ballot access across the country. But it's smart. It's a smart play because if it's really possible, if he can really do that, the Libertarian Party is entrenched enough now to carry stigmas with it. And as an independent, RFK gets to bob and weave and control his own narrative. But make no mistake, despite his inane and fantastical math that charts a theoretical path to victory, he's in this to spoil, not to win. And even though he fired the political consultant who said the quiet part out loud a few weeks ago when she explained how his candidacy basically screws Biden and helps elect Trump. That's what this is. I mean, maybe it didn't start out that way. Maybe he really believes his own horseshit. But in the end, this is what you need to know about RFK. You don't have to ascribe to the vaccine controversy one way or another to know that he has zero experience. He speaks out of both sides of his mouth. And he has no idea what he's talking about when he talks about economic policy or foreign affairs. But he knows goddamn well that he's a Trojan horse for Trump if he makes it onto the ballot.